Hello, this is going to be a tutorial on object renaming and object selecting for VFX. I'm just going to quickly share you a few tips that I picked up while working in the VFX industry. So we're going to start off straight away. There are timestamps below if you just want to skip ahead. But let's say you've got a complicated scene, so I've got all these objects and it's not organized in the outline or on the left hand side. Let's say I just want to select all the spheres and because I've not named them, I know they're all called P sphere. I know they're currently in a neat order, but what I can do is I can go up to this top bar, I can select this button here and click select by name, and then what I could do is do asterisk and then do P sphere. I don't even have to type the whole word, just uh, the letters that appear, and then do another asterisk, hit enter, and now it's selected all the spheres. And then we could do the same again, um, or in fact, if we wanted to select um, everything just with the letter P. So because these are polygon objects, they were all named P something, uh, P something. So I could just do asterisk P asterisk, hit enter and it selects everything. So there you go. That's a quick selection. And also what you can do after that, uh, as an example, so I'll get the P sphere again. So I'll type P sphere asterisk, hit that. Now to organize it, you could do one of two things in your channel box on the right hand side. You go down to display and you can click this button, which will add the objects to a new layer. So we could do that. So we've got layer one and we could call this balls and click save. So now what we can do is we could turn visibility off. It does not hide the objects in the outliner, but it does from visibility. And then if we don't want to affect them, we can go to R and then uh, as you can see, I can't touch them, but I could touch everything else. So there. Um, otherwise, what you can do, also another way of quick selecting, now that we've got this layer on the side, you can right click and do select objects. So that's a fast way. Another way of doing that is if you go to create and go to sets and do quick select set. And let's call it ball underscore set. Click OK. And then we scroll down and look, look what we have here. So we click on it, nothing happens. We right click. And then we could do select set members and look what we have there. So we've got that. So it's kind of doing the same thing as what was happening there. So that's just a quick way of selecting objects. And now for the rename. So let's say we want to rename all these balls because we've created the object and this is rubbish naming conventions. So now that we've got the set, so I can right click, do select set members and click up here and do rename and the way in which you would name in a company you would normally have the number in the middle but let's say let's call it ball as you can see on the left hand side we have ball and it goes like uh, you know it's just adding numbers on the end so normally it would be like one two three four which is it's not very good really what you want is something more like uh, ball underscore number underscore geo but let's put ball underscore geo and you see what happens again we're just getting lots of random numbers which is very bad um, <clears throat> depending on the company you work at, you would have the object name, so ball underscore, uh, then you might have a shader tag or uh, a material type. So let's say we want chrome ball, so we could call it ball underscore chrome for a material tag. So if you're doing it in Houdini, um, a number of the places I've worked at, they use that for shader tags, wildcards. Um, so let's do ball underscore chrome underscore. Hit enter. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got the numbers at the end. We're getting some huge numbers there, so that's not great. I'd have to like clear history on some of these. And then we go to modify and let's do search and replace names. And you can see I've already added added it. So in search for, put a dollar sign and then replace with, put underscore geo and then hit apply. So now we've got, apart from these ones with the massively not long numbers, so let's ignore those for a second. Um, we now have, rather than P sphere, you know, one, two, three, four, five, we have ball underscore chrome underscore 12 underscore geo. So the tag at the end, we know it's geometry, render, renderable geometry, which is very useful because you might have other things such as curves or, you know, you might have reference objects. So you might want to end them with underscore ref. Uh, as an example, let's do it again. So I'm going to select by name. Let's do it with the cubes. So I'll do asterisk P cube asterisk. Oh, I just hit too many buttons. Okay, so we've got the P cubes. Now click on this button again, do rename, and let's just call it box underscore cardboard. So let's say we're going to make cardboard boxes. Hit enter. 
you can see there. So that's nice naming. But now we need the underscore geo. So we hit apply and we can see underscore geo. The only one that needs to be changed manually is this original one. So I'll just put a zero there. But yeah, it's as simple as that. And the, the method before I worked this out, we used to use a script called um, Comet Script, which was a renaming tool, but it for many years it's not been compatible with Maya. Some companies have their own method. But anyway, I do hope that's helped. Uh, these are two things that I use almost on a daily basis when I'm working with Maya. I hope that helps. Cheers.